Okay, in this beginning Blender tutorial, I just wanted to show you a few things about soft bodies and winds and vertex groups. So vertex groups are one of the most powerful things in Blender for controlling soft bodies or other types of objects, and hair particles, things of that nature. So a lot of times, like maybe on like the plant video that I posted the other day on how to build the fractal type plant, sometimes in there what I've done in advance, when I make it want to blow in the wind, is I'll go over here into the vertex group like this and I can either do one of two things. I can either let's say go into here, press control R, maybe subdivide this like this. And then I might come in and pick out a face and assign it a value in here. I pick up a vertex group, I give it a weight, you know, I don't know, say say 0.5 like that, and I assign it in here. And then I might do the same thing through here. In fact, that's the old way I did it. Back in 2.37 when I did a tornado animation, I had to manually set all my vertex groups like that. It was quite the painstaking process. But now with array modifiers and weight paint, it's a lot simpler. So I nowadays instead, so if, well actually you can see that's set at 0.5. Let's do something else. Let's set this one down at 1 here and assign that. And I'll set this at 0 and assign that. I should actually be going the other direction, but you'll see what I mean. So now that I've assigned it to this group, then if I come over here into weight paint mode, you can see they're actually assigned. So there's 0 is blue, free to move, 0.5, or I mean 1 and 0.5 is what I had set it at. So one is fixed in place. So what I'll usually do instead is like forget that. I'll just get rid of that vertex group altogether. And we can verify that by looking at weight paint mode. Now it's all blue. So I'll just paint instead. So I bring up T and I come up here to this. And there's my strength of one. So if I was to paint with one down in here, I could. It would turn it all red down there on that side like this. Typically I won't paint as much. I'll drop it down in here and maybe just paint this if I paint more here or and I'll paint less as I go and maybe just a little bit less up top and won't even want it that strong sometimes at the top I'll paint a little bit on that side alright so there that is and it's set together and then if you look back here it's recreated a vertex group for us and it's applied the values in there okay so that works so then then prior to I've done that usually prior to building my plant. So like what I showed you in the other video, I'd go into here and turn that off for text select. Get those, right? Enable this. G shift Y and change it up something. So there's, the, there's the basis of my plant. But now it's got the vertex group set in advance before I actually build it. And that way when I actually, whether I build it with the array modifier like that, or I'll just build one with just a regular array modifier and a line, like maybe I was making a row of trees. I'll do that in Y, 1.5, and do that as 0. Just do a bunch. Okay. And I'll apply that. I always transform that origin back to the geometry anyway. Okay, so then I would come over here and then add my force field to the scene. Wind, right, R, Y. Now it's facing there. Now let's just run it. Let's see, are they on the same layer? Is this layer? What is that? They're both on the same layer. Got to make sure they're on the same layer. And then the last thing I need to do is turn this into a soft body. No, I don't need the cache. I need the goal and the edges. The goal, there's that vertex group. I pick that up. And there they go. You see it's pinned down there automatically because I painted that in that one level there. So in that case, it's easier just to, if you want a little wind, you just add a little bit of noise to make it a little noisy. But this really requires, if you want to make things blow in the wind, then you just have to vary this strength in here. Oh, I'll just do it here. I'll just I'll start back here at zero and say maybe strength is you know zero, and I'll press I and give it that, and then maybe up at twenty, it goes up to ten, and I'll press I, 
and do that. I'll just do something very simple, then I'll turn it back to zero. And do that, then I have to get the graph editor. And there's my curve that I just built like that, and I want to extrapolate that key, just extrapolate that cyclic. Okay, so I don't need my graph editor anymore. Now the wind is varying in speed. Let's see if you can see it affecting it. I'm going to start from the beginning. Yeah, let's try this. Let's crank up the quads a little bit. Those really help. There we go. So there you can see it oscillating back and forth. And that's how you can make your things blow in the wind. Right, so it's a lot of trial and error sometimes. The graph editor really helps, but it actually doesn't take that long. And then you can make some pretty convincing effects in the scene. And you can see it's working pretty quickly, right? Well, of course, that's it's one single object here, so that really helps too. So, All right, well, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next lesson.